your source for all things Texas Tech. This is the Ask Level Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, what's going on? And welcome into a, another episode of the Ask Level Podcast. I'm Choice Woodman with Chris Level. Thanks to our friends at Cantex Roofing and Construction for sponsoring this podcast. Level. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Level, what is uh, what's going on, man? How are we? We are good. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of activity. Is what we are. Let's put lightly. Uh, yeah. That's that's what we're doing. So yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, got uh, a lots handful. Of, yeah, lots of the things. A handful of questions we'll get into from the audience. So we'll do that, and uh, of course we're talking some basketball as uh, Red Raiders are coming off of a loss to Butler. Uh, get into a little bit of a lighter period here over the next couple of weeks before playing Vanderbilt. That happens to be on the same day as the bowl game we have recently found out about. Texas Tech will play against the uh, Cal Golden Bears in Shreveport at the Independence Bowl. Uh, I know this was projected a lot of different places. There were several projections everywhere, but uh, initial reaction to seeing that as the uh, locale for Texas Tech. I hope that uh, that Aaron Rodgers and Sonny Cumbie are honorary captains. Okay, that's what I, that's what I hope. All yeah, right, that's what I hope. Um, Heck, we'll even let Aaron Rodgers trot out there if he wants to play. I'm sure. Yeah. Right I mean, now, this current version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 2023 uh, Achilles. Yeah, written, that, that uh, version. Yeah. Version. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I guess my first thought was, I mean, not, not really a surprise. It's kind of the way it, uh, that pointed, I, I thought with Texas getting into the playoff, um, I thought there's a chance that, you know, everybody could kind of bump up, uh, uh, a notch. Oklahoma was not included in the new year's six, uh, mm-hmm. games. And, and that's what would have potentially bumped everybody up a notch. Sure. I don't know what that, what that looks like, but it potentially could have sent you to Phoenix on December the 26th instead of uh, Shreveport on December the 16th. Uh, because, you know, and, and I think, you know, the big 12 ended up, uh, you know, one of their teams and, and uh, West Virginia ends up going to a, a bowl. That's not a, a quote unquote big 12 uh, slot uh, playing in the, in the Dukes uh, Mayo bowl. All right. And all that. So yeah, it's just kind of a, a lot of dynamics at play based on the playoff and all that stuff. Who knows what in the world this process looks like next year. Oh my goodness. With yeah. the expanded playoff. I don't know with your expanded conference and what bowl tie-ins you'll even have. I don't know how bowls will necessarily work uh, going forward. There's st- there were, there will still be a bowl system and bowls and, and all those kinds of things for the, the teams that aren't uh, in that top 12. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, holiday bowl rematch. And, you know, now it's about for both teams, like a lot of these bowls, who's actually playing in the game, uh, right. who's in, who's in the portal. Uh, who's coaching for e- either team, uh, who's not coaching. I mean, all, all those kinds of things come into play at, at bowl time, but just, it, it makes for a kind of an awkward existence at some level, but, uh, and, and what, because of the portal and it's an unintended consequence, but for a lower level bowl game, which is what this is, this is essentially going to be what you're going to see in many ways is that, You'll have opt outs. I'm not saying I don't I don't know for Texas Tech. I'm just saying in general, you'll mm-hmm. have opt outs from players that say I'm not going to play in a bowl game if it's not for a championship or if it's not a massive bowl game or anything. And, and I have a chance to go pro. Uh, you have portal entries, you have coaching changes and all those things. And so in, in so many ways, what it what these lower level bowls especially become is like a jump start to your spring. It already was this with extra practices, but uh, it's going to be that way with what you the product that you put on the field as well. Um, as you know, obviously the Red Raiders have had a lot of portal entries since you and I last spoke, especially on offense. And yeah, I'd be willing to bet you that some freshmen and some different players, uh, you know, insert their name into the equation 
uh, as it relates to to bowl game time. So, uh, which kind of makes it fun in a way uh, right. for a, I don't want to say meaningless bowl game, but it, it makes it, it gives it a different tone and like kind of gives you a different reason to want to, uh, to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that um, there's so many moving parts, but the date of this game, it may be the most interesting part of it because you're playing on a uh, December 16th, which is really early traditionally for bowl games. Um, I think I believe I saw that this is the earliest a bowl game can fall if they're trying to start them on on the Saturdays with the way the calendar falls. So it's just a really early time for bowl games. And there, there's a few things. In it's play. less than two weeks yeah. from the time you and I are talking. This thing <laughs> no is going to be here quickly. I mean, that, that's right on you. So so with that, there's a lot of things like you're talking transfer portal. You, you've got to worry about players coming in and recruiting with the portal. You got signing day that's four days after the bowl game itself. You've got, uh, of course, you mentioned last week the the basketball game that falls on the same day. So that's a, yeah. a little bit of conflict of interest or conflict for interest uh, with Texas Tech fans that would want to be at both. Um, so it's just the, the date of this game, probably not ideal. Uh, for coaches especially that are trying to to sift through all the the heaviness that comes with December already but it's it's just one of those things you got to deal with here yeah I mean this is what uh, this is what hand you were dealt uh, and, and you're you're in some ways while it's it's not like ideal in some ways you're thankful for the opportunity I mean you earn sure. the right to uh, to extend your season and I think you'll, you'll use that but it's yeah it's going to be a going to be a lot going on in the next two weeks for Texas Tech football just because they're hosting uh, you know visitors over the weekends uh, I think they they've they've had people in you know th- this this past weekend that there will have people in town next weekend um, and you're trying to put your roster together for next year and you've got a game to prepare for and and yet for <laughs> for the Red Raiders you're in the middle of a massive facilities kind of oh yeah you know, uh, I mean, I can't begin to tell you how much it makes my head hurt because oh, I'm a big, big old exodus happening last. I'm week. a I'm a big I'm a big routine guy, and the building that they set up shop in and have for the last fifteen to seventeen years is basically going to be scraped to the ground yeah. on December. Like I guess it's uh, by the time people are listening to this, it, it's probably happening. Starting, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, there's a crane out there, like, as you're listening to this, like, leveling that thing. So, yeah, you've got coaches in the press box, uh, officing in there. Um, yeah, so just just uh, a lot going on. But, again, thankful for the opportunity. So those are my initial thoughts. Cal's a, a team. Uh, they've got they've got a few portal entries themselves that they just lost their offensive coordinator to Baylor, ironically enough, and Jake Spavital, mm-hmm. a, a last name that we are very familiar with. Sure. Um is his brother Zach was a coach on the defensive side of the ball here for for several years uh when under Cliff Kingsbury uh but and it's, so I don't think uh, Jake Spavital will uh will coach this bowl game they've already kind of promoted from within they have a uh, a really good running back in Jade Knott uh who I think had about 1300 yards rushing give mm-hmm. or take um and so you know I would guess that uh you know and I, and I'm going to assume until somebody tells me differently that Taj Brooks will play in this game Right. Uh, so it'll be two really good running backs and that'll be kind of what you what you lean on. But um, yeah, it, it, it goes into a different conversation, obviously, with with Texas Tech, because you've lost, you know, uh, a starter on the offensive line, some starters that receiver uh, for uh, to the portal that I don't expect to be on this trip or with this team anymore. I think they've played their last game as a Red Raider. Yeah. And so uh, here you go. Okay, so uh, one of those questions going along with the the date says, uh, Level, do we expect any of the high school players to be able to practice like you talked about with the early bowl game date? I I think some. I I don't know. I don't I've not been able to like nail that down. I think it was all kind of contingent on because because here's what I was told. It depends on when they can finish up, and every school lets out differently. But it depends on what they can do from a high school standpoint when they can finish up their semester, when they've kind of mm-hmm. uh, checked all the boxes on. Okay, I'm good here. I don't. There's no nothing else I need. I'm responsible for. Once they get a physical here, once they're enrolled in classes here, and all that. But a lot of legwork has been done. This is kind of like, in some ways, the worst case scenario as far as that goes for mm-hmm. your bowl game because it's the earliest possible, as you kind of talked about. 
And so, yeah, th th that will be very limited, really, if any. Um, I do think they can participate uh, before signing date if they've already signed their letter of intent, which will kind of give you an yeah. indication as to what what some of these guys may be thinking. Because I don't think you can, like, actual signing date is December the 20th, maybe 20th, the following yeah. week. This year, yep. Uh, yeah. So, um, but so I, I don't know, you know, I mean, that may be some of the things that uh, Joey talks about in, in initial uh, media uh, conversations that he has with uh, when he's able to, to kind of discuss this matchup. Okay. Um, a couple of questions football wise. Uh, this one you mentioned just a little bit ago from TTU Tricia says, can you speak to as to why so many wide receivers have entered the portal? I, th I think you can take them individually. Um, I think, you know, I think J Jerron Bradley almost, I mean, he technically was entered into the portal, I think it was last spring maybe. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody even knew that. Um, I think, you know, he kind of fiddled around with it uh, last uh, last time or last year at this time. Right. Um, I think that I'm going to use the word benched here that's my term uh, i think he got benched in that uh, game versus texas after you know the the, the db covering him kind of wrestled the ball away twice uh, for mm -hmm. interceptions um again that's my term I, I think that you know joey was kind of asked about this after the game and i think he kind of answered it like yeah we just use different position groups but i think there was a period where bradley came out and I don't think came back in. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, it, it just, you know, I, I think he's kind of flirted with this process before. Uh, probably best uh, for all, I don't know, parties to go their separate ways here. Um, I don't think it ever really uh, materialized into what everybody had hoped, whether on his side or the team side. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, but uh, um yeah, I mean, because he was a he was a first team preseason All Big Twelve guy, and it just never, it just never, it never happened. Um, you know, and I'm sure everybody can point to to the reasons why, uh, if you want to. Uh, but I mean, I'll just I'll just leave it leave it at that. It's uh, fair. With with Miles, uh, I think he wants a I guess a more of an expanded role, and 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 look, you know, some of this stuff you know, and I don't mean to like be critical here when I say this, this is just reality, but some of this stuff comes down to, I'm going to go to where I get paid more, you know, I'm going to go do what's yeah. best for me. Yeah. And what, whether that is factored in here, uh, and I hate to paint it with a broad brush, but this is reality. This is, this is college football these days. And I think that th that is factoring in with these conversations where you and I are having right now. Yeah. Um, and it's a gamble, you know, it's, uh, sure it and I, I feel like I can, I can go make more somewhere else. Well, go, go try to find out, you know, and, and, but, you know, but meanwhile, Texas tech or, or whatever institution that, that these players are leaving from, they, they also have a duty to move on and fill that spot. And we, we have seen situations where, Guys will uh, boomerang back and go, "Hey, man, you know, not not a lot out there. I, I really would like to return, you know, and uh, but I don't think that'll happen here. So that that's what some of that uh, comes down to uh, as well, and that's just the harsh reality of college football in 2023. Uh, so I, I think too, like with both of these guys, I think there's a there's a and, and and with Nehemiah Martinez too, who's also entered the portal. You know, Nehemiah was a backup running yeah. back coming into the season. Like he, he did great last spring, um, and then he missed what four to five weeks in August and the beginning Andrew, of the season, yep. and just really never got any traction. And he caught thirty two passes last year. Caught two this year. I think they yeah. kind of viewed him as more of a, a running back option. But then you had this this monster uh, 1400 yards uh, that carried the football for you and Taj Brooks. So there's not a lot of carries uh, divvied up elsewhere. Sure. And, uh, but, you know, I think the, you, you weren't, you know, overall from a team standpoint, you weren't fast enough. Um, I think there was, there was way too much inconsistency at the receiver position um, that it, that it has to do with the quarterback's injuries and lack of quarterback continuity and, arm strength of Baron Morton, all that factors into it. 
I just think it was maybe one of those positions and maybe it's my fault. Maybe we, we had too much, uh, we anticipated more there based on them all coming back and going, okay, well, surely they'll all take a next step. And it just, it just didn't work. And then you changed, you kind of changed who you were, you know, fans wanted you to run the ball more. Well, that's what you did. And so maybe some of these guys are like, Hey, I want to catch it. Uh, and I want more, targets or or but but miles and and bradley were the two most targeted receivers on the team by far and um you know but i I think the 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 one criticism you could have for both players if you want to offer one up is go look at yards per catch Um, i know that's what uh joey has talked to me about a lot on his coaches shows and all those things they want playmakers they want guys that make it easier on everybody they want uh yards per catch and yards after catch like up and I looked this up. I think Miles Price averaged like nine and a half yards per catch. I mean, there's like there's over a hundred receivers that average over 15 yards uh, per catch in the country. And so, you know, uh, but you'll you'll try to and all you can do if if they you can't make anybody stay. And so you, you'll try right. to go up. You'll try to go upgrade there. But I think you'll do it with you want juice. You want guys that can run. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, the receiver position in particular, was there a more disappointing position group, I think, from beginning of the season to the end of the season for you? Because that, that would probably be it for me, the, the receiving core. You just never had much separation, never had um, a ton of production out of the receiving core. And, and so it, it's it's a two-way street with the transfer portal. There are times where guys leave on their own, and there are times where coaches – you know, prefer for guys to leave. So, um, so you can get new guys in there. And I, I think that's probably a position group that, that uh, you can speak to this, where the coach well, McGuire and, and company will attack in the transfer portal. And you can look at this in a variety of different ways. You can look at it and say, um, you, you can point to scheme. You can watch the games and go, man, nobody's getting open. Mm-hmm. You can point, you could also say, we're not blocking long enough for anybody to get open. You can point to, you know, quarterback issues, uh, whether it be in injuries or or lack of arm strength or, you, you know, just, just having to deal with, with the, the playing three different guys uh, <laughs> like you did. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, what you want to point to the, the, the facts are guys have entered the portal. Uh, you will try to go upgrade there. Uh, you you definitely want to get faster. I think that's the premium, you know, premium, uh, um, you know, ingredient and in what you're trying to bring in at that position with any receivers that you would bring in from the portal is we, we need we need more speed. We need more quickness. We need more polish with route running. You want to try to upgrade. Uh, I And I think you want guys that can kind of make something of nothing. And that's why, I mean, you, you look at like, the top of your, your own league right now in Texas. I mean, Xavier Worthy and yeah. Sanders and, and A.D. Mitchell, those guys are, you know, they're all world, but they're all world because they're faster than most. They're quicker than most. They make plays. They, you know, the UCF guys that, that led the league, Javon Baker, I mean, he he had about as many catches as, as Miles and Bradley did, but he almost had twice as many yards. I mean, yeah. go look at it. You're in the you're in the 450 yard range in receiving. He's in the seven or 800 yards receiving, and I think the catches are pretty close to the same. Sure. Um, so that's what you're kind of looking for. And again, I like Miles. I like I like Bradley. I certainly like Nehemiah. I've known him for for several years. You know, Bradley's a a great kid. I think he's got a lot of people around him that make it a bit tricky. I think uh, Miles is a he just smiles and. It yep. kind of makes everybody laugh. I, I think, you know, so, um, but it's just like, you can't force anybody to stay here. If they want to go seek more targets or more money or more of a role or whatever it may be, this is the system. They are allowed to go do that and you can't force them to stay and, you know, but you, you, you can go fill their spot, which is what you're tasked with now. Uh, a couple more football and then we'll move on. Um Another question we had one last week about asking about how Jackson Knotts is said, will he be able to play for Texas Tech next year? No, he he's uh, I believe that he he's a senior. I think this is uh, I, I think I'm right there, but yeah, he's uh, 
yeah, his, his knees in bad shape. I think he announced this on social media. I mean, I think he's played his last game for Texas Tech, I believe. Yeah, yeah unless I have his classification wrong, which is always confusing nowadays. It is. It is very much. Uh, but I don't. I don't think he's got another year uh, available to him. But if I'm wrong there, I will apologize ahead of time. But I don't think I am. But I think yeah, he's played his uh, his last game for for Texas Tech. I think. Uh, but yeah, he will not play in the bowl game. And again, awesome kid. Uh, I mean, and again, most people don't know his name. I think I said this last week. Most people don't know his name, mm-hmm. which is a great thing when you're the deep snapper because he's just so solid and consistent that we're only talking about him now because he got dinged up. But that's a credit to to the job that he did as a as a deep snapper and a as a special teams guy. Yeah, no question. Um, here's one from Mark. Uh, this one comes from Twitter. It says level prediction time. Uh, does next year's youth help generate more wins than this year's super seniors did? Seems like a team stacked with seniors didn't result in better outcome quarter quarterback health aside. Yeah, well, it, it's the, the the last point is the is the whole <laughs> That's the big there. one. Yeah, um, I, I think your super seniors would have netted more wins had your quarterback or quarterbacks stayed healthy or healthier. Yeah. Um, you know, I hate to point to that and continue to point to that, but that's just the harsh reality of it. I mean, Florida State just got left out of the playoff for this very thing. So uh, they they obviously thought that that is a, a heavy factor in, uh, in into yeah. the uh, into the equation uh, for sure. Um, I, I mean, I, I've said this, but if if Baron Morton is is an answer for you, um, and I think that I'm excited to see what he can do. Uh, he has not played healthy uh, at all this year. I don't think he'll play the bowl game healthy. I think he needs some rest and recoup and uh, and, and some, you know, his, his shoulder is just, it, it. people will, I guess someday will be able to tell that story on kind of what he's dealt with. Yeah. Uh, but if he's an answer for you, I guess my point is in the next couple of years, I, I, I like your chances to, to really make some noise and be relevant in the conference race. If he's not, and he's, whether injured or unavailable, and you've kind of got this this merry-go-round of QBs, it doesn't matter how old or young your roster is, you're going to have a hard time winning. It's pretty pretty simply put. Uh, so what you just mentioned, the Florida State thing, got to touch on that before we uh, move to basketball. Florida State gets left out of the college football playoff, a 13-0 and team in a Power 5 conference. This this year was kind of the perfect storm with the the number of really good football teams. We haven't seen this yet since the college football playoff has been around. And ironically, it's in the last year of four before it goes to 12 teams next year. But, uh, I mean, what do, you, what do you say to a team like Florida State? Because it comes down to, I guess, if you're trying to, if you're the committee trying to put the best four teams in versus the most deserving four, what is the right process there? Yeah, th- this one makes my head explode here. Um, I, 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 because I, I see the. Um, do I, I? I hear all the points about. If if I was one of these other coaches, I probably would have said I, I I'd love to play Florida State if you want to give me a chance. That's how important the quarterback position is it's just hard to stomach because I would say for anybody that's like, Hey, they got it right. Alabama, Michigan, (laughs) Texas, Washington, they would have all beaten Florida state, put Texas tech across that Florida state chest. And you're telling me if you, if you'd have gone 13 and Oh, and you'd have grinded them out and you would have uh, had two sec teams on your non-conference schedule. Yeah. Neither one of those games were at home. You win them both. And they tell you it's not good enough. Because all we're ever taught is winning is supposed to be all that matters. Yeah, just win and it'll fix it. And for these guys, it wasn't good enough. And um, yeah, it. Uh, do I think Florida State would have been the weak link in that four team deal had they got in? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I. But the the whole thing really, really sucks. It sticks in my craw. I, I have a hard time with it. Um, and you get into deserving and then best and all this, all this junk. But it's just weird to see the optics of when and you're in, and they did, mm-hmm. and they did, they did, and they well, did, to, and, yeah. and it's hard to do. And even with all the adversity, they want you know a game with their 
backup quarterback in, in, I mean, the, the, the swamp and the swamp, you know, and yes, Florida's not great this year, but that's a, that's a rival, you know, and, and the is. whole deal. And they did it on the road. And then you go win with your third string guy against the team with 10 wins. Uh, and it's just not good enough. It, it would be really hard for me to stomach that. Um, thank goodness we won't deal with this anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll feel as uh, sickened uh, about the 13th team, um, you Probably know, not. next year. And, and again, I, do I think Florida State could have won the national championship? My opinion is no. However, it's not fair for me or anybody to be like, hey, all these teams are better than Florida State. No or chance. Be yeah. Florida State. You don't you don't know. Nobody right. knows. That's the beauty of sports. But they had a they had a job to do with the committee. I, I, I'll tell you this, too. It's really hard. I mean, it's really hard for me to kind of grasp how easily Georgia was just dismissed. Oh, yeah. I, I, I thought the same thing. Two- <laughs> when you were when you're talking about more deserving or like best teams, I'm not sure Georgia's not one of the four best teams in the country still. If you're if you're going off of that, so yeah, yeah I'm with you. It's the, the whole thing is so messed up, and the the optics of having four teams in with five Power Five conferences. Whoever thought of that in the first place, which is still better than the old BCS system we had, but I. I, for one, will be thrilled when we get to the 12-team playoff next year. Um, I hate it for Florida State, which, which, I mean, we know the logos matter. We know the blue blood part matters. Florida State's, if they're not a blue blood, they're pretty darn close and still got passed over. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you had you had big brands. Uh, yeah. That was always the thing. It's easy for them to gloss over, you know, a, a non-big brand to, to include a big brand, but no, they, these were all like heavyweights uh, sure. and, and blue blood types that we're talking about. But yeah, and Georgia's won 29 in a row and wow. had won back to back night and that national championships. I know that, I know that it's not supposed to matter uh, what you've done in years past. How can that not? I mean, <laughs> yeah. How can that not? Their because one loss you, is three points. Because yeah. you're trying to tell me, well, the SEC champion always gets in. Well, why? What is what is the any past SEC champion? What does that matter? You know, but it does. And so I, I just am shocked that. I mean, what's the best? What's the best non-conference win the SEC has this year? Yeah, I, I saw uh, someone point this out, and I think Kentucky over Louisville might be the yeah. The best I mean, it's win that they've got. Not, not not a lot, not a lot. So, um, I mean, if you're going league based, there. It's just, I mean, I I don't. I don't feel bad for Georgia. I mean, they, that, and no. again, for the committee, it was, it was the easiest uh, teams to justify. Hey, Georgia, you just lost. Sorry that we can dismiss you. Hey, Florida state, you don't have a quarterback. Sorry. I mean, and so they could easily point to those two things and like, just move on. And and that's why I think they did what they did because it's, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll see, but yeah, it, it just, it sucks for the sport. Um, uh, and and I, I hated it for I mean, reading what Jordan Travis, the injured quarterback for Florida oh, State, man. said is just heartbreaking. I mean, like, yeah. and what a class kid he is, and you just feel like, jeez. I mean, like horrible. Yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, and uh, I, I bet old uh, Kirby Hokut's sure happy he's not still the chair of the <laughs> playoff committee uh, this year because this would be a hard one to. And I, I doubt, I doubt you get a near as much uh, outrage over you know, 13, 14, and 15 I type agree. scenarios I compared agree. to when, because th- those are teams in most years that I don't think realistically could win the national championship. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's some teams that were left out of this one that realistically could have. Yeah. I happen to think Florida State wasn't one of those as currently constructed, but Georgia sure could have. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, and they were, they're dinged up too, and uh, you know, you 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 know, get some of that they're tied in and their receiver healthy in, in the next two to three weeks. But anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, you know, you, you're because winning is supposed to matter. You it's know, it's to. like they keep talking about head to head and pointing to all the well that they played each other. They decided it. Well, Florida State did too. It's like, yeah, it makes my head explode. So, anyways, but uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to get you going so much, but it, I knew it's just one of those hot button topics and. Oh, yeah. and next year will be a lot different at this time. So, uh, basketball, you got tri- – first, I know you were uh, excited for the trip to Hinkle. Did did the – sometimes we build things up in our mind, um, and then they don't live up to expectations. Did Hinkle live up to your expectations or your hopes? The, just the atmosphere yeah, and the, it was, and the it, look? 
it was probably I I wasn't as interested in like the the atmosphere as much as I was just seeing the old barn. I mean, the yeah. first game was played there in 1928. That's cool. Um, and and obviously Allen Fieldhouse has been there a long time, but you know Hinkle is a historical you know spot from a basketball standpoint. And so yeah, I kind of nerded out a little bit just because. <laughs> and this is where the final scene and Hoosiers was filmed and all that sure. stuff. And so it, it they've done a phenomenal job of modernizing this place but also keeping the building very uh old and and like kind of you know captivating kind of the historical perspective of it the way the way that they've kind of tweaked it if that makes sense um a a lot of the, the 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 old is still there but it's it's definitely modernized in some spots but you definitely know you're in a a really cool place uh when you when you pull up to the building in the parking lot uh but yeah I, I i loved it it was a and it was a great game it was if if you're trying to coach defense or trying to get stops in that game probably a nightmare for you but sure. those are fun games to broadcast because there's so many shots being made uh but the red raiders just didn't have enough uh, bullets in their gun that night to to just outlast a really good offensive team in butler who was averaging 80 a game coming in and you just had a hard time stopping them uh they're built very similar to you not a lot of holdovers from last year that they did not have a good year uh, last year like like you did um they they kind of went to the portal and they've kind of added a bunch uh and and people were kind of confused as to what they thought they would be and picked kind of lower end of the the big east they've been much better than anybody have, yeah. uh, would have thought um but uh yeah and you just i mean i don't know how much more you could have asked from pop or joe Toussaint or you know, I mean, and certainly Chance, uh, Chance McMillan. I mean, he just wow. you know lit it up. Um, and you know, Grant indicated after the game, we, we if we're gonna play this fast and play this way, I, I, we've got to figure out more depth. And I just don't know. You you can't conjure it up out of thin air. Uh, but no. Lamar Washington only played four minutes. Uh, you know, Kerwin Walton. I think they've kind of were kind of leaning toward getting him more. But I mean, it's. Yeah, nine I mean, in the game. Yeah. Even then, you played basically seven and a half guys the entire game. Yeah, you know, and, and essentially, your extra you bigs know. didn't really play. You Laho and Jennings, and, and, no and they would not have they would not have fit in that no. in that up and down uh, game at all. Um, it was moving very fast. It was very hostile. It was a, it was like a Big Twelve road environment it, in every sense of the word against a really good team and a, a guy in Thad Mata that's coached for. The yeah. national championship before. I mean, he's a he's a Hall of Famer. You know, I mean, big time head coach and uh, sure. at Xavier and at Ohio State for like thirteen years. And so, anyway, but uh, yeah, you, you you let one get get past you, but you almost kind of got blown out and then didn't, and it ended up being a, a game for fans to watch, just not for defensive minded head coaches. So, do do you walk away from the game uh, feeling any different about Tech, good or bad? than you did going into the game it's funny uh because i've had several people ask me this or several people like kind of make comments to me that like they feel better about the team i've seen that too yeah (laughs) after having watched that game which i was like huh okay to which it's funny because i guess this is the offensive minded fan base that we have because (laughs) i think football is, is like if you if you i think people are more okay if you lose 45 to 40 than yeah. if you lose 16 to 13. Well, I don't think there's a whereas, question in football that they feel that way. Yeah. Whereas, whereas basketball, I was shocked to see like all the optimism Yeah, because I mean, like Grant was beside himself and how porous the defense was. That was, like, one, of was worst, like, yeah. one of the worst defensive games I can ever remember. And he, he was just, he said it to me. He said to the media after the game, I think he, he, you know, he indicated when he was telling me this, that he had told the team this he said, fellas, this will not work in the Big 12 defensively. It will not. We will be embarrassed. Uh, this is not going to get it done. In no way is this acceptable. Yeah. But there's a process here, and they're still kind of working their way through this process. And this process may take longer than this season. I don't know. But it, as far as more optimism, I I don't. I mean, yeah, I, I think Chance McMillan's shot making makes me very optimistic. Mm-hmm. I think, but there's plenty of like, you know, I mean, Joe Tucson has given you everything he can, <laughs> but he can't realistically do this night in and night out for 40 right. minutes a night. It's just not, I don't buy it. I mean, that's just asking too much of him. 
Um, and uh, you you just got to be better. Uh, you know, Darian Williams didn't play great. Cambridge had his moments. Warren Washington was not much of a factor in this one. You know, so there there was yeah. plenty of thumbs ups, but plenty of like, oh, this isn't. But ultimately, it ended up in a, in a loss in a in a, a game that I think would have helped your your net sure. ranking and your RPI and all that good stuff. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's some reasons for optimism for sure. I, I really like Grant though. He's very transparent. He, he he's just upfront and brutally honest with where yeah his team is and where he Agreed. hopes to take them and knows their limitations and knows what they've got to get better at and all those things. So uh, this next question ironically is from Grant, not McCasland uh, says if the team or if the season were over today, do you project Texas tech as a tournament caliber team? If it ended today? Well, I guess, I mean, the better way to word the question would be is, is Texas tech a tournament team right now in your eyes? Um, Maybe not an NCAA tournament team, but maybe a tournament team. Okay. Maybe, maybe like a, you know, another, I mean, the big 12 is, is going to be ruthless. Sure it is. Um, and, you know, you're going to need to stay really healthy and you're going to need to improve and you can, uh, but it's going to be a grind. Um, it's going to be a grind and you, you know, you're, you're, you're basically two and two in your, in your tougher non-conference games. Uh, I do think your home games in the non-conference have been tougher than in years past. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's some dividends that can be paid there, but you really only have Vanderbilt left that, you know, on a neutral court that can really do anything for you. Right. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're trending in the right direction, but, you know, it's it's going to take a lot. Yeah. The, the, this team is – it's going to be quite the uh, puzzle to figure out over the next couple of weeks before Big 12 play rolls around for sure. And fun to watch it. Well, uh, it's like they they just need you know and again everybody could say this it's like hey man I need to lose ten to fifteen pounds we all could <laughs> uh, some more than others including right. myself thanks but they, they they need one more guy yeah that, that, like they need one more not role player they need like one more dude that can really play and I think that will be you know that will bear out that they just need one more like guy if you added it to this this team <laughs> I think that. You know, and we'll have to remember, you know, how long it took to put this team together. Are, are you going to stay? And then you're like thinking, do we want you to stay? I mean, there was this process played out. And, yeah. you know, we just have to remember that as that was going on, guys are flying off in the portal, out of the portal, all that stuff while you're trying to figure out what you, you know, all that stuff. So I didn't mean to be long winded. I know we're running no, we're out good. of time, but. Yeah. Uh, Mark had one more question. Mark will hold it. He, he sent two questions and we'll hold your next one till, uh, Till our next episode next week and we'll we'll get it yeah. in that time so level um we know the uh location for the bowl game so maybe see you in treeport before too long definitely got some yeah. basketball maybe broadcasts we'll we'll hear you on for sure and uh, appreciate the time man you got it appreciate it uh, enjoy the week uh and we'll uh, we'll talk to you next time keep hope alive everybody that's chris level i'm choice woodman it's been the ask level podcast brought to you by double t 97.3 You've been listening to the Ask Level Podcast, powered by Double T 97.3.